and we are live happy monday hello hello happy monday everyone welcome back to another happy magnet monday we are glad to be back and honestly we have so much great content coming up that you guys are in for a treat today thank you so much for joining us the ones that are live the ones that are on clubhouse you know we are trying to be everywhere at once so you know we're glad to be here erica how are you today I'm doing fantastic. I'm happy. It's Monday, a new week, a new start of the week. And I am super excited uh, to have Connor with us today, um, talking to us. And, you know, it's going to be a great week and a great 30 minutes uh, masterminding, how I call it, with Connor. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you, Connor, for joining us. We have the pleasure of having Connor here today. He is basically an all over entrepreneur. He's an investor. He's, you know, he helps uh, everyone in real estate. He's basically a pro when it comes to technology and all of that. And we want his insight today. Connor, how are you? Thank you so much for joining us. I, I am doing very well. So first of all, thank you so much for, uh, for having me. I just uh, appreciate always making new connections in our industry and and it's a great way for me to learn new things, everything between uh, strategy and real estate and marketing and tech. Um, so just uh, happy to be here and contribute however I can. Absolutely. And it is our absolute pleasure, like I said, you know, having you on. So thank you for making the time. Connor, we get right into it. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself so that our audience can get to know you? Yeah, so, so 10 years ago was actually when I had started kind of in the industry up in San Francisco in Northern California. I'd started at a company called Trulia. I was fortunate to be there very early um, before going public, before being acquired by Zillow Group. Um, and my theme over that 10 years has always been sort of obsessing over what are the biggest and best real estate agents and teams doing uh, to sell as many homes as possible. And certainly a part of that is through um, you know, through what they're doing in their systems and their lead generation and, and their business, you know, operations. Um, but a little over a year ago, I actually, uh, you know, personally got very interested in, in uh, taking a step a little bit further in that I was always reading about, always hearing about, always watching and kind of learning, you know, the, the strategies around um, SOI and personal brand and scaling ourselves on the internet, using mm -hmm. communication to drive inbound opportunities and and, uh, and and conversations. And so I literally went from like, you know, complete newbie Googling, how do you edit a video um, to going through this process of what I call docu-making. Mm -hmm. So uh, just making content about pretty much everything in my life from, you know, the things that I'm intrigued in personally, whether that's you know, business and strategy, or I have three young kids and, and uh, love my wife and family. And, and, you know, that's something that's very, very important to me that I love making content around um, all the way down to, uh, you know, collaborating with real estate pros. So um, I've interviewed, I've been fortunate to meet with and learn from a lot of top real estate pros throughout the country. So I've uh, made it a point to essentially interview them, whether it's on Zoom like this or um, in Clubhouse or on IG Live. And sort of using that as a vehicle to continue my learning, but even more interesting, not necessarily the learning from these agents, but the learning from the doing. So, you know, going live, being on camera, um, producing and cutting and editing that content and then distributing that content across, you know, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, email, Clubhouse. Like I've been sort of really obsessed with kind of, again, learning what they're doing, but then applying um, a lot of that. So I, to this day, I actually don't sell any products or services, um, neither for Zillow nor on the side. Um, but I, I have so much conviction around, um, you know, scaling ourselves and, and creating personal brand and putting content out, putting written words, photos, pictures, videos out on the internet um, leads to more conversations. And certainly for me now, a year later has led to a ton of just um, really exciting opportunities, conversations, relationships from you know, being offered to, to be an advisor for funded companies to, you know, having all sorts of other affiliate deals or whatever it is, like it, it, inbound conversations definitely um, have, have been a, an exciting result of that. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at now is just continuing to docu-make. Um, I, I make videos around all the parts of my life. And uh, this year, I actually have a goal of interviewing uh, 100 top real estate pros 
Um, so I'm sort of giving myself a, nice. a, sort of a, a measurable goal, but that pillar in and of itself is something that I think is kind of, a, you know, the, the macro strategies. I just want to continue, make new connections, learn new things and have fun along the way. That's amazing. And, um, you know, that you you're helping. What? That's great that you mentioned that because these people. honestly, the, the fact that you're saying that, you know, you didn't know how to edit a video that you were Googling at first, it, it gives, you know, other people like, okay, so I can do this because most of the time we have the will, like we see that everything is happening in technology, you know, social media is where it's at, like to grow your business, but sometimes you don't know where to start, you know? So thank you for, you know, letting people know that you can just Google it and start, just start doing it. Like it, it'll take practice, but you'll get there. Yeah. You know, and practice I, makes perfect. Exactly. And I, I think I'm probably one of the most unorganized people that I know in that, like, I don't like batch my content. I don't have some cool like calendar planned. I don't use a scheduler. Um, I'm very like, just, I like to be hands-on and just sort of like in, intuitive and as I go. Um, so I'm certainly learning in my process, but I think without a doubt, if um, it, it, it validated to me that anyone can just make the decision. And by the way, I haven't spent a dollar on content creation or amplifying with ads or whatever it is, but I think through a, through a thoughtful and, uh, deep uh, content strategy, then you can really build a lot of meaningful relationships that eventually lead to meaningful conversations. That's awesome. Absolutely. That's fantastic. And uh, let me ask you a question. Um, I know that you're we interviewing. You. Yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm between Clubhouse and oh, I'm muting and muting myself. Here, um, how are you helping all these agents, all these realtors all over? Because I actually, I met you in Clubhouse. That's the beautiful thing of yeah. Clubhouse. I met you in Clubhouse. I messaged you and I'm part of a Women's Council of Realtors organization. Um, we're a national organization and they always taught, um, taught us and teach us that the task is to ask. And I literally send the, uh, my co-host in, in Magnet Monday, your information. I'm like, we have to have Connor on board. He is helping agents, yes. giving us good tips about branding, social media, YouTube, video. And it's mind blowing. You're helping so many agents by doing this. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for saying that and, and recognizing that and because it means a lot to me because, you know, what's tough, I think, about this whole conversation when we get into like social media, especially is it, I think as, especially a lot of these clubhouse rooms can get sort of caught up in like, how do I get more views or go viral or a lot of these yeah. things that to me are a little bit, um, you know, not entirely what a lot of us are searching for at the end of the day. Um, and plus, like I've, I've seen it, you can, you can create a video that gets a lot of views or a lot of comments, but it's not, I mean, that's only one video, right? So to me, I'm really thinking about uh, a 10 year strategy. What you just brought up is like, I'm really trying to create like thousands of real relationships, not like get likes or get thousands of followers. I'm trying to create real, real deep relationships one by one by one by one. So, um, you know, you reaching out like this, I, I'm super happy and grateful because uh, to me, it's just the, this is just the beginning of our dialogue over the next, you know, Years ago. Absolutely. And that's what it's all about. I think people focus most of the time when they starting in a business, they focus, okay, so how am I going to get more sales? How am I going to do this? How am I going to get people to buy my product? How am I going to get more clients, whatnot? But I think if you focus on making connections, like you're saying, you know, the revenue will come by itself because people love connecting with people. And at the end of the day, that's what we need as human beings. It's not just another salesy product in your face. Like I can help you. This is what I can do for you. Pay me the money. It's more, it's more about building relationships. And I'm glad that you're taking, you know, this step and making it that way, like making it your purpose to make connections because like here we are, like you live in San Diego, I'm in Orlando, Erica is in Miami. So, you know, we're all connecting here and virtually, but we're all making connections. And I know that this is not the first or the last time that we're gonna, you know, do this. You know, I'm pretty sure that we're gonna do this again and create, you know, more um, business possibilities, more opportunities and all of that. So I'm grateful that you're open to building relationships because that's what it's all about. And, you know, in, on that note, tell us how you're using technology 
to build those relationships. I'm glad you asked that. That's exactly where I was just going to take this because I think, you know, I, I vividly remember a decade ago um, as I began, you know, this journey of even building relationships, maybe less intentionally or thoughtfully, um, but I was using a fax machine. I was literally using a fax machine. Um, and, and that kind of wow. evolved over time, right, to uh, phone calls and, and then to emails and, and over time to text messages. And then very much so, I think, in these last few years to social or kind of other places. I mean, I like to describe to people, they're pretty much at any given moment, like six or seven. You, know, you count Clubhouse, so now it's like eight. But like apps and knowing how to be the master communicator um, or being your best version of, of how to communicate and exist on those apps, I think is the strategy or the variable to your question. So like, you know, I, it, it's cute to say like, hey, I'm building relationships, right? But that's actually, I think the underlying sort of like, like sort of a core, but the real variable, mm -hmm. the real ability to like, you know, get the most value from it is can you scale that process on technology or on these apps that I was just talking about. So let me let me get real specific. Mm -hmm. So like it's one thing for me to do an interview or to have a conversation in a closed room, in a closed Zoom, or in a silo with someone who's selling 500 million a year. Um, and, and like really, I was actually doing that for years. I was having like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I mean, I felt incredibly fortunate to like learn from and, and meet these, these types of people, but I wasn't doing anything with technology you know, to scale that. So I think what's really a, an important shift um, hitting on today is technology is allowing us to scale that communication. And so the best salesperson in real estate was probably always like the best communicator, um, whether that was one on one, uh, door knocking on the phone. But now it's who's the best communicator on these six or seven apps. And so what I'm getting at is like, you know, again, I'm still incredibly grateful. Like I have an interview uh, this evening on IG Live with Dan Beer. He's the number one, uh, you know, grossing agent team in San Diego. And, uh, and again, that's going to be, that's, that's incredibly nice. Because first of all, I work with him. And that's, you know, so that, that part's, you know, fun and, and easy. But I think, again, the real, like to your question, it, the real value is how do I squeeze the juice from this collaboration? So am I promoting beforehand? Am I going live during? Am I producing or cutting or editing, you know, two, three or five different uh, video clips from that interview? So taking those 30 seconds, taking those 90 seconds that were insightful or inspiring, and then making sure that I distribute that on, you know, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, email newsletter. So all those different apps that I just mentioned. So I think really tying this hopefully to your question. Um, it's definitely about the relationships. It starts with the human interaction, but our ability to scale that on the internet, our ability to, to show it um, on these apps um, is pretty much, I think, the variable to getting more conversations, more, et cetera, et cetera. Like, you know, I think really tying this point home, and then I'd love to maybe even dig into some questions from anyone that's either in Clubhouse right now or, or on the Zoom, but like, um, you know, tying this, tying this point home, like we literally wouldn't have connected if I didn't do that, right? Like if mm -hmm. I just had that conversation with those people that I did on Clubhouse and maybe I don't know really the one or the multiple sessions you heard that kind of got you to say, who's Connor and do we want to connect with him? But I was really just having conversations with existing relationships, right? Like I already knew some of these people, I've worked with some of them, but if I wasn't willing to have that conversation on Clubhouse, if I wasn't capable of having a quality conversation with them on clubhouse you guys just never would have seen me we wouldn't even be here right now so i think it Absolutely. you know er everyone's this shift is going from you know you're a great salesperson locally in orlando or miami or whatever it is but now how good are you at communicating this across you know these all these multiple apps um and scaling it and repurposing it and squeezing the juice from I, your i think we got um pushed out of clubhouse i think we have to rejoin I'm in Clubhouse, Connor's there, you're not there. Okay, so ping me because I am out of the room. I don't know what happened. Okay, I just did. Okay, thank you. Okay, here we go. There you go, I don't know what, I don't know what happened, uh, but any questions, if anyone has any questions uh, for Connor, let us know in Clubhouse, in Facebook Live, if you guys have any questions, 
Um, I know I do, um, you know, for a lot of my followers and realtors, they're always asking me, you know, what is the best way? I have a listing, you know, but I'm not good into videos. And I, I know you and I have discussed this before. I'm not good into video. What should I do? What kind of video I should do um, if I'm if I'm listing this house, you know, what pictures? You know, a lot of realtors, I don't know what it is, but they're afraid of the camera. They're afraid of doing videos. And, you know, I know that um, you constantly mentioning this in Clubhouse, how video and branding is so important. And um, I want you to touch that because we have also Zoom and they're actually seeing you. Um, and my big following is realtors and lenders. So I really want them to hear from you. And guys, if you have any questions, please um, let us know and we'll ask Connor. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, that's, a, that's even a good question to, to run with. Um, because, you know, I'll start with video and then I'll go to your other part of the question on like how realtors could deploy this specifically or a strategy. But, um, you know, for, for the last, you know, a little over a year ago, I was barely sharing anything on social. So I pretty much had like a blank canvas. I had like a couple photos of me and my kids. So I think, you know, on one hand, I definitely think everyone should come from this self-awareness. What do I like doing? What will I consistently do? What, what am I excited and proud of doing? Because, that will come through in the content, whether you're great at writing. I actually, you know, used to prefer writing a lot more. So I started writing on LinkedIn before I was doing any videos. So I think it starts with a little bit of self-awareness in terms of how, how do I like to communicate? How will I consistently show up um, versus what, what makes me uncomfortable and what's just not natural to me. That being said, me having tested across the board, written content, photos, videos, business, personal, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, I've tested across the board. And like on one hand, it, it really all works. But at the same time, I really do believe video has a little bit of an advantage in that. You know, when we talked, I just mentioned scaling ourselves and what we're trying to do mm -hmm. is build a real relationship. We're trying to create real trust between human to human. And I guess there's, in my experience, there's just only so much of that that can occur through like a blog post. Um, certainly quite a bit you could, you know, there are plenty of people that probably make millions a year off of written word alone. But yeah. um, I think if you're capable of video, people seeing your face, hearing your voice, getting familiar with what it is that you align with and what your beliefs and views and fears are. And, 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 you know, there's this phrase I love, like your vibe attracts your tribe and there's no better, easier way to, to show your vibe than just being on video. Um, and I'll say that actually a year ago, um, I was terrified of video. In fact, to this day, I don't like looking at a camera and like filming myself like this. Like I right. hate it. I, in fact, you probably won't see one of those if you scroll through my entire feed. I think I've done one or two all time ever. And I was like very uncomfortable. Um, and, and a part of that I think is maybe me, I can improve or whatever that I can look into. But you know, what I do feel comfortable with is conversations like this. I can get fired up mm -hmm. and get passionate. And, and have a conversation and ramble almost all day. So my unlock for video was, was, was finding a content pillar. I really like this phrase because it helps me visualize the strategy, but a content pillar that sort of unlocks my ability to just go, 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 and just create as much content as possible. Um, that's at least 80% of what I'm trying to achieve um, with that whole relationships and trust and so on. So interviewing people, that's exactly how that became one of the core pillars for me is, uh, you know, whether that's people I've worked with and known and like already um, or straight up cold DMing, you know, Ricky Caruth, the number one agent in Alabama, and just asking him if we could do that. And that, you know, you'd, I think you'd be surprised how many people say yes when you're actually trying to put them on the map, right? When you're trying to tell their story, right. trying to mm -hmm. give them value without even mentioning, you know, what you do, um, then I think a lot of people say yes. But my, my point in that story is that that allowed me to now create hundreds of videos that allowed me now to create a goal and a pillar this year to create hundreds of more videos. And, and you know, I really believe at the end of this year, I'll still only have scratched the surface. So like, um, I think that ties into what a lot of real estate pros could consider is what is a content pillar or what is a video pillar that would unlock my ability to make thousands of videos. Like I have more video content than I can even post, produce and edit, which is a good problem. Wow. I wanted to create that mm -hmm. problem. Um, but I think sometimes, you know, a lot of agents when to your question originally here, like how do I sell this listing or how do I achieve this one thing or this one video? And I, I guess 
um, outside of like that being effective or not effective, like in my experience, that was just hard for me to creatively come up every single week and like, you know, find some new idea to make up and sort of like, you know, tell to the camera and, and stuff. So um, I think one of the best content pillars actually, if you're an agent in Miami or in Orlando or in San Diego, and I've seen this is, is to me, you're not selling the home right? You're, you're selling the trust equity of working with you. You're selling the lifestyle of wanting to live mm -hmm. in that area. Mm -hmm. um, and so to me, one of the best pillars is uh, really collaborating with like, so you said you're in Miami, right? Like I, I, I can imagine there, I've been there once there are like endless, you know, opportunities and stories to tell around culture and music and people. Um, and so I think, you know, one of the best pillars for someone in real estate is to literally like DM the the you know the coffee barista down the street or the famous chef or you know the the pastry shop owner like all the things that are incredibly hyper local and interesting to the homeowners and the people who want to live in that area that stuff is interesting to them like knowing your home is for sale is just not interesting to them so I'm really really big on figuring out what you know what is a content pillar that you can do endlessly over and over and over and over. And is, does that align with what your audience wants to see or does that align with what you want to sell? So to me, that's kind of that final distinction is like fine, exactly like you guys have done here, right? How do you lead with giving value without even talking about what you do? Um, how do you, you know, create a pillar where you can do video, video, video over and over and over? Um, and you know, here I am like a year later, I feel like I'm still just getting started scratching the surface, but um, now I, I feel even more convicted than ever that this is the strategy that gives me the leverage to have incoming conversations, incoming opportunities. Um, and it's something that you can scale and grow, right? If I do this for another four more years, like I'll have that many more opportunities coming my way. So it's really the strategy I think a lot of pros could, could lean into is video, building trust equity in a super local, um, you know, lifestyle kind of way. And using, you know, this platform, Clubhouse right here to make connections, to build relationships, like you're saying, it's a great way to go into those DMs and make sure that you're taking the conversation outside of a room because a room is great to listen to, but then make sure that you're like right now, we have a lot of people in the room, like make sure that you're following each other, make sure that you're making connections, make, make sure that you're following each of the ones of the moderators up here. And if you have any questions, please raise your hands because we're talking today about real estate, about investment, about technology, about social media, about marketing, but best of all, about making connections. And that's what we wanna um, you know, make sure that we emphasize here today in this room. Like, let's make connections. L make sure that you're tapping into those profiles and you're seeing you know, where each person is at, what they do, build relationships, make sure you DM them and all of that. And, you know, Connor, the, the way that you're putting it, um, you know, so easy for us to understand, like how we can create that content pillar that will allow us to create our content, to be creative, to make sure that we're putting out value out there. And, you know, you said something that is truly amazing. You said, you know, if you reach out to somebody, letting them know you want to highlight them, like, I'm pretty sure that people will say like, yes, because that's just, you know, part of the, the reason why I'm in this business is because I want to make sure that I'm making connections and I'm letting people know about what I do and how I can help them. So, you know, guys, just take notes. Like, this is very valuable information please make sure that, you know, you are asking questions. And I see that we have people up here. Um, yeah, my friend, uh, yeah, my friend, my friend, Lauren, um, I've met Garrett a couple times here. So I'd love to get into maybe some questions they have. I'll, I'll say Absolutely. real quick, because I know we're, we're coming on five minutes is yeah, it's, it's, I think it's finding that one or two pillars. And, and being clear, is this a pillar I could do over and over and over and be incredibly excited and proud to do every single day? Um, cause then that is the best way to me to make it a long-term approach. And last thing I'll say on that one is, you, you know, if you get zero viewers, if you don't even promote it beforehand, if you don't even go live during, if you don't even produce any content afterwards, which by the way, I, th I said, I think that's like 90% of the value. Um, you can still pretty much guarantee that by the end of the year, I'll have a hundred more relationships that are a little bit deeper in terms of you know quality and trust and so on, so I just love this as a pillar between the tactics, let alone uh, you know the, the 
the relationships underneath. But we got five minutes and I think we got three questions on stage. So I'd love to hit each of them. Uh, maybe we can do Absolutely. kind of a semi lightning round with starting with Lauren. people can find pillars that they're excited and proud to make content around every single day then it'll be easier long term plus you're you're you know to, the way i look at this is we're all creating a personal brand and we're a realtor so it's not even like the realtor and this i think it's we're creating a personal brand we're trying to create trust at scale and i do xyz um, but love it lauren great great points because um, i want to hit these couple guys too garrett do you have a, a question you wanted to throw up Basically, I passed it around a little bit um, and helping realtors. So I'm in the digital marketing space and uh, SEO has always been, and anything pretty much related to Google has been a top performer. And uh, the more I dive into this market, I'm realizing that, uh, you know, branding yourself and almost around, you know, your authentic self is, is key to tapping into your audience. But I was wondering, um, you know, I think everybody probably has their own unique method to like, you know, obtaining new clients, whatever your demographic is, whatever real estate you're selling. But almost as like a general rule of thumb, I was wondering if people had noticed whether, um, you know, is it is it the house or listing itself in the video content or is it more of a reflection of the personal identity of the realtor and like, you know, their fun work on a property and giving, you know, their valuable advice? Or is it more just like, you know, showing off the content of, you know, maybe it's a beautiful listing, a million dollar listing and showing off all the beautiful assets. So just wondering if anybody had any experience on what generally performs better. Yeah, I mean, I like this question. This um, question. Um, I don't, I don't doubt that people can sell a property, property from a video from in and of itself. I've actually heard so that I've story occur. Heard, story I just, heard. I just think I that's um, you. You almost can't control that at all, right? Like, especially when, you, when you're talking about someone buying a home or a family. Like, they just, they may or may not, you know, be be able to, you know, or be ready to to even move. And so, I think the real game or the strategy is how do you position yourself so that you are the, the person that's top of mind or preferred when that moment comes. And so really, I'm, I'm, I just am a huge believer in the value of brand at, at, and awareness earlier in the sales cycle, whereas the home sale is basically like at the very end of a sales cycle. Like, Gary, I don't know if you've actually moved yourself, even renting, you start thinking about that like months before you actually start packing boxes and pull triggers on, on certain decisions. So I'm really, really into, you know, brand being the answer, personal brand first, um, and then whatever you do or sell afterwards second. So like Garrett, you and I hit on this, like whether it's SEO or buying leads or, you know, be arbitraging something that's relatively cheap, you know, there are great ways, especially if you're looking at like something like Zillow or SEO or Facebook leads, those can work. Those can help accelerate but they're not the long-term strategy in my mind. The long-term strategy is brand. It's getting, it's not how many people you know, it's how many people know you. And so I think at the end of the day, if you have a million people who just know, like, and love Garrett, like I pretty much don't think it matters what you sell. If you sell digital marketing, you sell real estate, like you'll just have the opportunities to sell that next yeah. thing. Um, but when people focus on a property or focus on a product, I think it's too late in the sales cycle. They're not building 
the connection early enough in the buyer's journey. Um, so there's a buyer's journey and get really nerdy about, but it's sort of the psychological stages that someone needs to go through to eventually, you know, especially a six or a seven figure transaction like real estate, they have to really go through that journey of developing trust. So, so Garrett, my, my quick answer is even for someone who's maybe crushes SEO or can get leads for a penny a lead, um, that's going to be great for padding money or accelerating growth short term. But if people don't know you, um, then you know, I'm just quoting Tom Ferry, then your, your, your business is vulnerable. I love it. And I think it's so true. So I think you're doing great advice on it. Cool, man. Thanks. And we're, we're going to go a couple minutes over here. So Michael, I want to make sure I get to you to, uh, thanks for being patient and answer any questions for you. Welcome to the stage. Absolutely. Thank you so much for uh, just putting this room together. First and foremost, I just chimed in to listen in a little bit. And I wanted to add to something that both you and Garrett said. Uh, first and foremost, yeah, you guys are in a relationship uh, business. So building relationships online takes you from being able to build one to one relationships to one to many. Right. And like Connor was saying, it's all about gaining that, you know, the no like and trust, no like and love. Uh, from your content. So one thing, Garrett, that I've seen, at least with some of my agents, uh, that's worked from a content marketing, particularly with listings, is having them create a video where they are given a full listing walkthrough. Uh, and more than anything, kind of sharing the story about that particular home and teaching people, that, you know, like, here's where your family can make their meals, here's the backyard where your kids can grow, and kind of painting the picture for people on that video and then advertising that to their general demographics, wherever they're forming their business at. This helps them stay top of mind, but it also begins to create that particular filter of having people recognize who they are and what they do. And at the end of the day, because it is a relationship-based business, you're not going to be for everybody. So I think if you get your face in front of as many people as possible, and then uh, people begin to make a decision themselves as to whether they like how you come across on video, they like how you present your listings. I think that's where the game is at. And like Connor said, it's a longevity game where you're thinking about your brand, not just one year from now, but really five to 25 years from now, uh, realizing that your name needs to be relevant and top of mind in whatever it is that you do. So I just wanted to add to that. Uh, I had a question before, but what you guys talked about kind of took over. So just wanted to share my second thoughts on that. No worries. It's a good point, uh, Michael, because... You know, a little over a year ago when I was first putting videos out, I think, you know, I, I posted maybe a dozen or two dozen videos and got, you know, upwards of minimal to zero, tran you know, traction and maybe a couple of friends and family being like, hey, what are you doing? What's going on? Um, but then a little over a month later, had the first stranger reach out and saying like, hey, I'm looking to buy my first home. Can you help me get qualified for a loan? And so, again, I don't even sell anything like real estate, but um, that to me was the first kind of like moment of validation that like people are going to pay attention. People are going to passively consume. You're going to, you know, gradually build trust. And then when they're ready, um, you're hopefully there. But, you know, one thing I'll maybe wrap with here on the last minute, because I know, you know something, it's sort of been a theme on Clubhouse and a lot of real estate pros I talk to is like, they sort of see the value of video. They kind of get it, um, but they're just not in that place where they're like doing consistently so I, I really think if I had to sum up, you know, what work, what has worked for me up to this point is um, maybe a couple of bullet points on this. Number one, start with giving yourself maybe a minimum frequency or, or a goal uh, or a cadence of how often you're going to exist. So I don't even mean post or put a message out there. I mean, exist. You pretty much exist on these apps or you don't. And so, you know, the way to exist is through content. And again, whether that's written words, pictures, videos, or whatever that is, um, you know, we're going to, I'm, I'm suggesting that you exist once a day. That's kind of what my goal. And I don't even hit that. I probably post five, six times a week across all these major platforms. Um, so, so set yourself a minimum frequency or cadence to exist somewhere, um, some amount of time. And then number two, find a pillar write literally write down what your pillar is that you'd be excited and proud to do every single day not begrudging or nervous or anxious or maybe people don't love it um you know maybe real quick random idea like something around the listings because i know this just came up but like you know maybe you love cooking and you love food 
So maybe you do a video where you cook inside a listing every single week. And what's, what's fun about that is like, it doesn't even have to be your listing. You can in fact find the most expensive listing in Miami and be like, Hey, I do a cooking show where I cook in your kitchen for one hour, but I put you on the map. So like, I, I think there are all kinds of ways to find a pillar that aligns with who you are, aligns with what you like to do, aligns with your business outcomes that you want. And then that to me is the unlock for, you know, doing a hundred plus videos this year. Cause probably all too often when people ask a question on this topic, they'll do a few videos here and there and they don't have that consistency. So I like the idea of giving yourself a minimum sort of once a day, just like we all brush our teeth or whatever it is, like try to exist um, at, a, at a minimum. Um, and then on the second hand, try to think of a long-term pillar, an infinite game or an infinite strategy that would allow you uh, to keep going. But I'm, I, I'm going to have to run and wrap here. I, I want to say thank you again to, to both of you ladies so much. I, I really do appreciate you just reaching out and saying all the nice words and, and letting me like, you know, ramble on here this morning. Um, I want to say thanks to everyone right now that's in Clubhouse. It's really cool just to connect with people exactly like you were both saying. Um, you know, when the room like this ends, you don't get a chance to really connect with these people. So take a moment to look around, tap on any profiles for people that align with you. And and uh, that to me is kind of the, again, I'll end with my thesis for the years. Thank I think if people thank can- Thank you so much, Connor. People can lean into making relationships and learning new things and, and just, you know, constantly doing, then I think everyone will be in a good spot by the end of this year. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Connor, for making the time again. We really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone that, you know, joined us. And stay tuned because we are going to do this every Monday at 1 p.m. We're going to have a special guest up here. You guys can learn from, ask questions. We can learn from you as well. Make sure that you're following us. DM us if you have any questions questions let's make those connections i love what you said connor you know about collaborating like it doesn't necessarily have to be your listing we most of the time think like how am i gonna you know surpass or be better than someone else you know what i'm saying but i think that collaborating and collaboration is where it's at like making connections everybody if there's you know profit for everyone so let's just make connections let's make it happen let's make sure that we are growing together and again connor thank you so much for joining us everyone on the room thank you so much we'll be here next monday and thank you erica for being always such a lovely co-host no thank you. you so much guys i wanted to mention something real quick is i'm in miami and i Every time an agent is tagging me because I'm part of NAREP, the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. So I have so many agents all over. And when I have an agent who's tagging me on my story on Instagram about a property that they listed in LA, I reposted that. And I found a buyer locally. And that is the power of social media and the power of branding. And I think that everything like you mentioned, Connor, it, it's combined. It's not only... Hey, I'm a realtor. No, I am a realtor and this is my brand. Connor, this is your brand. You, Connor, I know that whatever you do, I'm going to call you. Hey, Connor, I need a realtor in San Diego. I need a lender. I know you're going to hook me up. And that's the key to always, you know, um, doesn't matter where that person, wherever you meet that person, that's a connection. And that's what is the beauty of everything that we're living in. So again, thank you so much for doing this. And we look forward to... Um, interacting again and listening to you in Clubhouse. And guys, connect with Connor. Please follow him. Connect yes. with him. Ask him any questions that you have. And we look forward to seeing you guys soon. Thank you. Yes, All thank right, you again thank so, you much. so much. You guys have a good one. We'll definitely be in touch later. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for joining us.